In the other video, I kind of skipped over how to find the derivative of the square root of x, and I thought it would be, it's worth talking about. Uh, even though there will be some shortcuts we learn later that will uh, help us do this with a little less work, it's worth talking about how we're going to do it. So the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x all over h. Now, the temptation here that people always say is, well, just square everything. I don't want to deal with square roots. We can't square everything. Squaring changes the value of the function. Uh, if you don't believe me, you know, think of just a number. One-third. Okay, now square it. One-ninth. Well, one-third is 0.3 repeat, repeating. One-ninth is 0.1 repeating. They're not the same. Squaring changes value. So the thing we always have to do is just multiply by something equal to 1. In our case, we use what's called the conjugate. Okay? The conjugate you've used in pre-calc, it keeps the two terms the same, but it changes the sign between them. You use that a lot with imaginary numbers. So square root of x plus h multiplied by square root of x plus h is just x plus h. Now, square root of x plus h multiplied by square root of x is ugly, but then we have a negative version right behind it that cancels it out. Negative square root of x and, negative, and positive square root of x is negative x. The bottom, I'm not going to multiply out. I'm just going to leave it as it was, so... Rewrite that. So x minus x is 0. That's gone. So h divided by h is 1, and that's gone. We just have 1 on top. When we get the cancellation, we plug in 0. So we have 1 on top. And on the bottom, we have square root of x plus square root of x, which is 2 square roots of x. And that is our derivative.